any car enthusiast with any semblance of taste has a soft spot for Italian cars, wouldn't you agree? That's a very strong statement to come out there with, oh, Sonny Jim. Just like a darn Don Garlitz museum, we're making some big claims. <laughs> <laughs> I've been with everyone live, so that's going to be lost. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I do agree, I, I think. Depends on the Italian car in question. Yes. Well, here at 47, our tastes may sometimes be questionable, but we do like Italian cars. Most of them, some of them. I don't like Fiat Multiples, I'm not about to... I like the original Multiple. Right, you've ruined any credibility you already have, so just go. There's just something about Italian cars, even if they're totally crap, they're really easy to love. Yeah, it's kind of like most of my ma's children. No coincidence that all the big design houses were Italian. This car, in fact, is interesting and in that it was not designed in Fiat at all. It was all outsourced. Usually they outsource the styling, but at this time it was styling and mechanicals all went to Ital Design. So Giugiaro designed the body and Mantovani. Mantovani? Mantovani designed the mechanicals. They took just 15 days in Sardinia in the summer of 1976 to come up with what they would know as the Zero, but what we know now as the Panda. So this car was made to replace the much loved Fiat 126. Which you have a key ring of? I do, yeah, post, the, the little Polsky Fiat. Fiat CEO Carlo De Benedetti wanted a car in the same vein as the Renault 4 or the Citroën 2 CV of the 1950s. The Do Chevaux. Two horses. Giugiaro took inspiration from a folding lawn chair, of all things. Can you tell? I knew a girl in high school whose nickname was the folding lawn chair. I don't want to know. <laughs> he wanted the car to be simple, practical, and easily maintained, just like a chair. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Who thinks about that for a chair? Giugiaro, one of the great designers of the 20th century. Now he specified that as well as four passengers, this car needed to be able to fit two 50 litre wine demijohns in the back. So I assume it can, we don't have two here to check, unfortunately. We do have demijohns and other such things, but 50 litres is a very big size. It's, it's a lot of wine. So they decided to go with a monocoque design at a time when most people were still building separate chassis. One single cock. Just one. That's all you need. That's what I tell my woman. They made the floor flat and they made the roof high so that it could accommodate upright seating, which is kind of like the K car idea, but before. So this is basically a Suzuki Wagon R. But much nicer, you'll agree. I, I don't know, had some good times in the Wagon R. <laughs> in the 15 days it took the two men from Etal Design to, make, to design this car, Fiat's CEO, Benedetti, actually left the company. Like literally within 15 days of him saying, go and, go and make me a car. He actually, I think, got sacked for fucking... For drinking 50 litres of wine. <laughs> I think he was like a money wrestling in his account sort of a thing. Oh, right, okay. Or maybe he laid a load of people off and they didn't like it. I don't know. Anyway, he, he wasn't there when, he got, when, when they finished this, like, a week and a half later. Um, but nonetheless, the people that were left at Fiat did like this car. By the middle of 1980, they had put the car into full-scale production. The car debuted at the 1980 Geneva Motor Show. Uh, carrying the name Panda after M. Panda, the Roman goddess of travellers. The World Wildlife Fund actually protested at the name Panda because obviously pandas are their thing. Uh, but a large financial contribution to the WWF from Fiat made that go away. I don't like the WWF. All they do is complain. Not about animals, but just about other things. Oh, you can't call it World Wrestling Federation, that's our name. Oh, you can't have Lara Croft shooting all these animals, that's bad. Fuck up. <laughs> That touched the nerve, obviously. It but, did. Um, within two months of the Geneva show, they had 70,000 orders for these. Giro said Panda was like a pair of jeans. Practical, without pretense. Which he actually lifted off of Pierre Dreyfus, who designed the Renault 4 in the, in the 50s. Like, word for word. He just stole his book. Nice. Uh, Dreyfus had said the Renault 4 was... Like a pair of jeans. <laughs> nearly classless, you know, without snobbery. The Renault 4? Yeah. Really? I don't see it in the Renault 4. I don't really. Not sure I see it in this either. No, I wouldn't be rocking up to Monte Carlo in the Panda, like. I don't know, it might be fine. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. But he, he said, anyway, he stole it off Dreyfus from Renault. Uh, so let's let's take a look around this pair of jeans. <laughs> let's unbutton these <laughs> jeans. <laughs> it's 
So Dejaro designed the back seat in this car, not only to hold 250 liter jugs of wine, but also that the back seat could fold into a bed. Now we've just been looking at this and I'm not sure, I'm not sure I could fit in this. No. I'm not sure you could fit in this. I probably could. I'm pretty short. I'm very good at fitting into small spaces. Weird. Okay. Let's see. Well, let's see if we can fold it down here. Because it looks like you just take this parcel shelf out. Is that a hard plastic parcel? Wow. Which seems to be okay. You could probably use that as a picnic table if you put folded legs in the bottom of it. That looks to be a really good idea. Somebody's bound to do that now. I don't really know how this works. I've established that. <laughs> I believe we've established that. <laughs> You'll have to take our word for it. I'm yep. sure this does fold into a bed some way, shape, or form, but. I don't think it's a bed you want it to be. That's. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Look, it's a partial shelf. That's class. Good work. You've shown us absolutely nothing. But in the theatre of the mind, you imagined a bed. <laughs> Door handles, there aren't any, even on the back, which is really, really inconvenient. Take a look at this. Take a look at this deal we're not making. <laughs> All right, Josh Homing. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. You press the button and you just lift it underneath. And the struts are like really, really good. But I don't know if that's just this one or that's all one. Push it down and show the boot handle thing. Or lack of. Yeah, there's actually, there really is no handle, you just grab in the um, seal. You have to grab in under the seal and just... That's really off. awkward. But Faye didn't have to buy door handles, so who's the real loser? Us. The end user. <laughs> <laughs> Again, on the side, there's no door handles, there's literally just a push button here, with a nice little bit of trim over it. There you go. And open it in, but Douglas DeMuro already told you that, didn't he? Yeah, realistically, there's no point in us showing you all the quirks and features because there's a fellow on YouTube who does that. What Doug didn't actually tell you, I think, is that the windows are completely flat and they are the same shape on both sides, front and back, so that you can you can use them across. You can be interchangeable. As you can tell, because the lettering on one side is facing outwards and is forwards, but when you come to the other side, it's a uh, it's on the inside or it's on the outside and it's backwards. So yeah. Cool, isn't it? It's cool. We had actually Weird. struggled to find a manufacturer to make glass like this because everyone's just used to making proper glass. Proper glass. It has quarter lights, which is realistically the sign of a good yoke. Chris Rio will be happy. All of the interior was designed to be taken out and washed really easily. For Fair your enough. extracurricular activities. But tell me this, when was the last time you had to take your door cards off and wash them? You don't want to know about what I've got up to in my cars, Connor. Okay. I'll tell you this, I've never had to take mine off. <laughs> well, clearly you have more self-control. <laughs> <laughs> the interior is completely Spartan, as Douglas already said. Like Master Chief. Spartan anyway. 117. Anyway. <laughs> Famous story goes that when they presented this to the board of Fiat, they were like, you haven't finished the interior. But then I was like, yeah, I have. <laughs> Drops awesome. Mike, walks out. <laughs> this is this. Everything is just designed to be cheap and mass producible. Which in certain circumstances you actually would, you really wouldn't be very impressed with. But in this, it sort of has this charm. Yeah, like if you went and bought uh, an MGB, for example, and half of the interior just wasn't there, you'd probably be a bit annoyed. Like. Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be able probably on strike that day. <laughs> <laughs> Steering wheel's on the wrong side. Steering wheel is on the wrong side. We're not going to talk about that. We could just uh, edit it so you've mirrored the footage. Yeah. Oh, these are flimsy. What? These. Oh, wow. There's just a wire frame in there and it just... It just makes flippy touch floppy. It. It's actually broken. I didn't break it. You didn't break it. I didn't see anything. Uh, um... Dashboard is tiny, but you can see if they want this to be over here. For oh, that's a good dash. measurement there. You definitely didn't make your hands smaller or bigger there. The dashboard's only this big. <laughs> I can't believe they made the dashboard this small. <laughs> what kind of witchcraft is this? <laughs> it's like uh, looking at a map. Can't believe Ireland is only this big. <laughs> another famous 
feature is the ashtray, which you can flip across to your home brain. <laughs> that's not even Italian. <laughs> no. Let's say it's easy to for friend. Uh, Germans. Oh, anyway. <laughs> um. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just a really basic little car and you can transport wine in it. That's all it's for. This is... So if you need to take the eggs from the shop, you buy a 2CV. And then when you need to move wine, you buy Exactly, this, this is this is at least 2CV. Do you know of the story about the 2CV? No. Their design brief was that they needed to be able to take a carton of eggs across a bumpy field without any of them breaking. Ah. So there you go. Fun fact. And then uh, Tracy Baker's ma bought one, so... That's that's quite right, she had one of the very late ones. Yeah. Remember that? She was never on time, it was so late. I, re I remember not being impressed. When I was really young watching Tracy Baker and her pulling up in the like, battered, like faded red 2CV, I was like... I thought hers was yellow. <laughs> it's red, I guarantee it's Is it red? red. I'm gonna Google it and we'll put a picture up. Probably get copyright strike for it. <laughs> so here's an interesting fact for you. This engine bay is designed to accept either a transverse engine like this or a longitudinal one. Which goes to the back of the car, that like an Audi. That away. Oh, looking at it. Oh, Where? Yeah, I can so see you can't see it? Covered in wheel and air filter? No, but I can see a transmission tunnel. Which is which is what you need, basically. That'll be for the four-wheel drive models. Well, yeah, there was a four-wheel drive of this as well. We never even told, talked about it. So they came with a mixture, actually, of air-cooled engines and water-cooled, as you see here. Mm -hmm. The air-cooled engines were uh, longitudinal mounted and the original, I'll put a picture of the original grille here, but the original grille was like a quite an iconic design with like one side had the grille and the other side was solid and depending on which engine you had, the air-cooled one had the vent on one side and the water-cooled had the vent on the other side and they just flipped the same bit of metal to, to make it that way, cost saving. And what did they do for the TDIs? Thankfully, they never did. Well, <laughs> they're lost. They probably could, you probably could fit a TDI in here. Well, whenever the current owner gives up on this one, and we give him twenty pounds for it, we will put the TDI on it. That's so tiny. And you did the hand measurement, so it's going to be even smaller by the time you get it out of the car. <laughs> if you had to put the radiator over here, it would fit. <laughs> Fuck the noise. So the smallest engine, the air-cooled one, was a 650cc two-cylinder, which must have been really small. So small. And then you could get a 650, you went into water-cooled, then you get a 650, a 769cc, a 900, nice. which this one is, this is a 900S, and the S must mean spaghetti. Uh, you get a 950, a 999. 999! 999! <laughs> and then you went into a 1300 diesel. Nice! Couldn't get the 1300 diesel in the UK, unfortunately. Uh, imagine also, a diesel panda. They also did a van version as well, but you couldn't get that here where they extended the roof line back. We'll put a picture of that up. How do you extend the roof line of that? You see in the picture, basically, it looks like it looks like wank, really. <laughs> so the. When did the 1900 diesel then come in? That must have been a Tom Patterson special. It will be someday. <laughs> <laughs> so the original first generation panda ran from 1980 to 85. And then the second generation, which I believe this one is from 85. This is an 85 car. From 85. 1985? All, all the way to 2003. Oh God, imagine going to a Fiat dealership in 2003 and coming out with a brand new Panda like that. In Italy you could. In the UK they stopped doing these in 1993. Jesus, 10 years I kept going after they tried to kill it. They were popular. That's mad. Yeah, popular wee car. It's, it's the original Fiat 500 mantra, it's cheap transport for the masses. Or 2CV. Get, One of the generic. Get the, get the peasantry out of horses and into four wheels. Then we can start taxing them and everything. You know it. <laughs> They're not slow. So there you have it. Italy's 2CV. The Fiat Panda. Or the Seat Marbella because... Say it on Fiat. Fiat on Say it. Somebody on somebody. So what do we think of the Fiat Panda? Talk to me, Tony. I really, really like these cars. Do you know that? I never really cared for them. I had one on Gran Turismo 4 when I was a kid. 
And I was like, this is cool, but shite. And then I see it in person, I'm like, okay, it's just cool. I wouldn't buy one. Okay. You can't just come out with a statement <laughs> like that and then... No, I, I'm gonna. I really, really like these, but I'd, I wouldn't be arsed buying one. I don't know what I'd do with it. Drive it. I don't know. No, I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, wouldn't do it. Well, that's a depressing end to our lovely <laughs> adventure with the cuddliest name for a car. So there you have it. A quick look at Fiat Sunsets, the 2CV and the Renault 4. Just a cheap car for everyone, basically. Um, there's not much to say about it, really. I think it did its job really, really well. You know what I mean? This is never anybody's bedroom poster car, was it? Unless they were really weird. You might have had people with something wrong with them. Yeah. Or they asked, they told their man and dad they really liked pandas and they went to the shop to buy them a poster for the bedroom and they accidentally came on with a fake panda. Yeah. I think this is just, this is just a fantastic example of like, just a car. I think, I think it's beautiful design, honestly. That, that, I think it is. that word has never been used to describe a panda without the word not in front of it. It's also only got one wiper I'm just noticing. Uh, it, isn't it? One mirror, one wiper. It's basically a Mercedes. <laughs> I think they're I think they're a brilliant example of of just really just everyday car design. Some real blood from a stone shit here, Connor. I just don't really know what to say. <laughs> just leave it at that then. Do you, can you think of anything to say about I have that? absolutely no words about this whatsoever. No. I love it, I think it's class, but I have nothing to say about it. Yeah. I would, like I said, I wouldn't... I couldn't envisage me buying one. There's an old fella running down the road. Maybe he needs a Fiat Panda. He does need a Fiat Panda. <laughs> now that is exactly what these cars were built for, to keep the Italian old people going. And save them running down the streets in mm. Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed looking at this little Fiat Panda. Something different for us. As always, I have been at Hughes Corporation, and the man behind the camera has been at Tomo.Possum. Check us out on everything, and subscribe, and all the rest. Thank you very much for watching this episode of 427. That was really heartfelt. Yeah. Really heart. You, you meant that when you thanked them for watching. <laughs> Thank you. We will see you in the next one. Good luck.